Hello. Well, we just got out of the 18th anniversary re-release of Drop Dead Gorgeous at the local AMC. <laughs> 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 now, th this was a Patreon request from um, Jordan Shaw. Uh, if you are Jordan. a hey, um, if you are a top contributor over on Patreon, you get to request midnight screenings. Uh, the most of you. As of doing this video, the most recent blog entry on there is another entry talking about this, and just in the comments section of those particular entries is where, if you are one of the top subscribers, you can write down what you want us to see. And uh, his he he wrote it down in the comments, going, "Yeah, could you and Sarah watch the 1999 movie Drop Dead Gorgeous? No reason, really. <laughs> I just really like the movie, and well." Wanted another perspective on it. <laughs> you haven't seen this movie before, have you? I haven't. Uh, I recognize, like, everybody in it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when um, Denise Richards showed up with the, the Mount Rushmore on her head, uh -huh. I think I've seen, I, I remember the, like, the previews for yeah. it when it was coming out in theaters. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, no, I'd never, like, I had to ask you what it was about. The name didn't even, I was picturing a... Um, the movie where Goldie Hawn is like a candelabra through her stomach. Death Becomes Her? Yes, but that yeah, was not yeah, what this yeah. movie was. Dave was actually thinking of another movie, too. What was uh, he when, I, of? when I got here, Dave and I were talking about this, and it wasn't until several minutes into this conversation, I was like, are we thinking of two different movies? Because he was mentioning Steve Zahn. Mm -hmm. I've seen this movie before, but it's been since 1999 that it came out, so for all I remembered Steve Zahn was in this movie. And then I mentioned the, the, the mockumentary thing about it, and Dave's like, it's not a mockumentary. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, it is. He's like, no, it's like Steve Zahn is like a, at a... Uh, <laughs> Steve it. Zahn is a... Like, no, don't kill the light. I killed it. Um, <laughs> <That'll> murder! <laughs> um, he's like, it's Steve Zahn is like... A, me in a beauty pageant. Pageant or something. <laughs> it's like in a pageant or something. I was like, Happy Texas? <laughs> oh my God, I remember Happy um, Texas. And I... I they're wish like bank robbers, right? And they have yeah. to pretend to be pageant runners. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I completely forgot about that movie. Um, but yeah, that's what Dave was thinking. Of. <laughs> it, was, it was Happy Texas. I think he was closer than me. Mine was just the concept of death and women. <laughs> <laughs> well, that could be any movie I watch on a weekly basis. <laughs> I, when I first saw this movie, and Dave was the same way, honestly... Dave watched it with us, too. Mm -hmm. um, but he's not invited to talk about it. Sure ain't. <laughs> um, uh, we kind of had this... Like, we both remembered not liking this movie mm -hmm. back in 99. And watching it again... I actually really loved this movie, watching it again just now. I hadn't seen it in 18 years. Uh -huh. And Dave and I, uh, when you went off for a second in there, Dave and I were both kind of like, I guess I can kind of maybe see where I was coming from 18 years ago. Only in the sense that I imagine maybe I was kind of burnt out on teen movies or something mm -hmm. then when this movie came out. Because I rented it. The movie was out for, I don't know, a couple of weeks or something like that. This movie wasn't out very long. And mm -hmm. I don't remember it getting that good of reviews. Um, and I watched it. I remember watching it when, I, when it hit video and not really thinking that much of it. But I think I may have been just kind of teen movie burnt out a mm -hmm. little bit. That's the only thing I can think of. Because watching it again, I thought this movie is fucking hilarious. Not, like, I wouldn't really <laughs> consider this a teen movie either. No, and, and neither would I. Mm -hmm. But then, like... It was a different time. Right? Yeah, like, the way the movie was kind of marketed and you know, starring Kristen Dunst and Denise Richards, mm -hmm. I can, I guess, sort of see a, why I would maybe be burnt out on, on this. Maybe, like, that's the only thing I can think of as to why maybe I wouldn't have cared much for, for this movie. Also, it could have been that back then... I think Dave and I just maybe naturally didn't care for a lot of things Buford liked. <laughs> well, that's just me. I know, I know. That that might have been it. Like, uh, I, I think that 
and again, keep in mind, I'm just guessing, because no, this movie's not She's All That or Varsity Blues or something like that. It's, hey, I like it's, She's it, All That. It, I, you know what? I would probably get it more of a kick out of that now than I did back then. <laughs> but, like, um, <laughs> whenever Buford would usually say, I, I, I say this as if we always disagree with Buford, and really we don't. <laughs> but um, when it's something that Dave and I would maybe not be sold on by the trailers back then, and Buford would like it, Dave uh-huh. and I would just kind of assume we probably wouldn't like it, and maybe would kind of go into something not wanting to like it. <laughs> Well, because, well, Dave and Buford were both really big into the state. Yeah, At yeah. that time. And so, like, apparently the prov- Providence, is that the word I'm looking for, of this movie, is it was by one of the state fellows? The, yeah, Michael, uh... Michael Three Names. Yeah, he directed this movie. The writer of it wrote, uh... Wrote the Lisa the Beauty Queen episode of The Simpsons. Okay. Um, which is a great episode. Uh... Also co-wrote Scout's Guide to the Zombie Apocalypse. This movie is a lot better than that. <laughs> but watching it again, I'm my sense of humor really hasn't changed that much since mm-hmm. '99. So I don't know. Maybe in '99 it might have just caught me in a bad mood or something. I don't know. Maybe I wasn't in the mood to watch a beauty pageant dark comedy when I watched this movie back then. Maybe your tolerance for, uh, like, absurd humor has I don't th- gone up? No, no, because, like, you know, Dave and I grew up watching a lot of dark shit, a mm-hmm. lot of d- absurd shit. I mean, we both watched The State back when that was on. There's gags in this that are reminiscent of some other Simpsons gags, like the, uh, um, the beginning of the Streetcar Named Desire episode, which was the Miss American Girl pageant where in that episode too they had weird different things on their head coinciding with different states <laughs> and stuff like that so no watching this again I'm like I, I really don't know why I didn't why I, maybe it just kind of caught me in a bad mood maybe it was, that's it it's because it was the 90s and no one liked anything in the 90s <laughs> I did. I was. I really wasn't that guy in the nineties. <laughs> like I grew up watching slasher movies. Like I, I like flannel shirts. Well, I and still I like, like that. And stuff. And I like popping tricks on my skateboard. I oh well, I was never good at that. Uh, um, I was better at doing tricks on a bicycle back then. But I I still wear flannel shirts. But no, I liked things back in the nineties. Like the frowny kind of. Uh, more cynical type was more Dave than me. <laughs> oh no, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> me, no, not necessarily. I mean, everyone was a little bit more cynical in the 90s, but I still liked things. <laughs> um, no, this movie, I was in tears in several scenes in this movie. Sad, when we so were every time it. he was on, on screen, I was just watching him. <laughs> yeah. He God, this, this okay. So this movie is a mockumentary about a beauty pageant like in Minnesota. Minnesota. It's kind of if you crossed C- Christopher Guest with the Cohen Brothers, mm-hmm. that's kind of this because it is. There is something really cheerful and innocent about everything that you're seeing. Like it's presented in just this oh gee happy go lucky kind of way. But people just fucking die in this movie. <laughs> They'll get fucking blown up, shot in the head. No, well, because like in the in the first five minutes, they're just kind of setting up all the different pageant contestants, and then the one shows up, and she's like, "Yeah, I'm joining for the scholarship." You know, mm-hmm. I, people don't think I'm gonna win, but I win forget everything, and then she just like rides off in her thresher over the hill, and then just the, the thresher explodes. Yeah, it's like, oh, okay, it's one of those kind of movies. Oh like, yeah, this movie gets dark, but it gets dark, but it the tone still relatively is the same through it, Mm -hmm. which still makes it charming whenever someone gets... There's some really dark humor in this fucking movie, man. Like, the the former queen who's an anorexic. Oh, that poor woman. (laughs) Because, well, there's an entire anorexic bulimia (laughs) wing in the hospital. Yeah. Two wings in this hospital. Burn ward and anorexia ward. (laughs) And so she was like, Kristen Dunst would go and visit her and she's like brushing her hair and like talking to her and then like mm-hmm. pulls the hairbrush away and there's just like a clot of hair hanging off of it. Yeah. Like, eh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she's she does a musical number in the beauty pageant in which she's just 
pushed around by her nurse in a wheelchair. Lip syncing to everyone cries on the inside or something. <laughs> yes. And they take the crown off of her head when they crown a new queen and there's hair coming off of it and shit. <laughs> like, one of the judges is a pedophile. <laughs> yeah, they were going a little heavy handed with that. That was so really funny. Like, Will Sasso is... Okay, so Michael McShane is one of the judges. He, he runs, like, the hardware store in town. Yeah. Him and his um, mentally ill brother. Everyone everyone calls him a retard in this movie. And I think, it, again, it's because it's the 90s. And yeah. it was hilarious to call someone a retard. <laughs> and But he's obviously got issues. And so, um, like, there's scenes where they're like interviewing and Will Sasso's in the back just like, there's it's parts where he has his like, pants down. His pants are open. There's really there's a lot of funny gags like that. Like just off to the side, like the one the the beauty queen who's like hooked up with the football players. Amy who, Adams. Oh yeah, that fucking was Amy. Yeah, yeah, Amy Adams. So, I think she and, must have been in like some weird monog like a polyamorous relationship with the two because mm -hmm. they kept making out with each other, and like her her talent portion was her cheerleading while they wrestled each other on the floor in front of her. <laughs> that she was probably my favorite character. I just didn't want to say it out loud because I didn't want her to die. <laughs> Did you, did you, that line she had when uh, Brittany Murphy gave Kristen Dunst her uniform to wear to do her tap dancing and Amy Adams off to the side says something like, it's too bad you can't perform naked, I already asked. <laughs> like, there were lines and shit that just got me in this fucking movie, man. Like, when, when it's showing the judges, um... Like, doing their votes and everything. They're in their judges' quarters trying to determine the winner. And Will Sasso has, like, a freak out. And he and the pedophile guy start fighting. The pedophile says to Michael McShane, like, Why couldn't you have just found him a babysitter? And the, he's just like, Eeeh! And Michael McShane just... <laughs> How dare you? You know the babysitter just died. <laughs> <laughs> fucking what? The, my favorite of the fucking... And this was a quick thing, but my favorite of the fucking talent portions was the girl who was just doing dog barks. <laughs> well, the one who had, used to have a German Shepherd, but it got sent to a farm after attacking her. And she's just sitting there on the couch. And then she lifts up to his shirt and she said, They made me a new belly out of my butt skin. Yeah. All the lines are so genuine in this movie. Like, <laughs> and so she's doing her talent, which is dog barks, but it's just, it's not like watching a professional bird caller. It's just like, <laughs> arf, arf. Arf. And now here's my impression of the German Shepherd. Arf. <laughs> arf. <laughs> Fucking what? <laughs> And again, there's dark shit that happens in this movie. People get burned alive in this film. <laughs> and again, I, I think it's a PG-13. <laughs> well, they never really show anyone dying. No. Like, um, like uh, Kirsten Dunst's little boyfriend gets shot in the head. Yeah. It's probably by Denise Richards, because it seems like at the end they're making that, like, Kirstie Alley killed everybody. Yeah. But Denise Richards had to have killed the, killed the boy, because... Kirstie Alley wouldn't have known, right? Well, Kirstie Alley at the end did have that sniper rifle. That's true. Um, but anyway, like the like the the boyfriend died, but mm -hmm. it was off screen. So Kirsten Dunst was just like working in the morgue because she worked in the morgue, pulled up, back the blanket. Oh yeah, my boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Like bullet hole, a little I, bit of blood. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's still happy music playing over the soundtrack. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. I, I was trying to remember how the movie. And did because I remember Denise Richards getting blown up because that mm -hmm. was in the trailers for the movie. Um, I remembered this movie not really being marketed all that well. Like the movie didn't get very good reviews when it came out, and I think it. it You're just a little bit before its time, maybe. Maybe I mean I don't know. Maybe like uh, I don't know. Maybe people just liked the Christopher Guest movies better, better than this, or something like Fargo, mm -hmm. which would only have been just a little bit before this movie. Um, but I don't know. Watching it again, I think it really stands on its own. <laughs> I really liked it. I, I laughed quite a bit. Um, if I have one complaint, the it's that uh, it kind of dragged on at the end because like, Denise Richards dies and then there's like 20 more minutes of movie. Yeah. I don't think they necessarily needed to do that. I, I, I liked the ultimate uh, culmination, uh, but, um, that just took a meandering 
time getting there. It did, and I was thinking the same thing, too, because I was trying to remember how this movie ended. I couldn't remember if, like, does Denise Richards come back in this, or does it turn out that, like, Kirsten Dunst was the actual winner of the beauty pageant the first time around? Like, I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember how far it went into the other pageants after that. But where it does, and you're right, I was thinking the same thing too. I was like, oh, this movie actually could have ended like 10 minutes ago. Mm. But where it did end up still had some good gags. There's like a whole, what the fuck? <laughs> Don't worry, Barry Gibb just saved it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> We're back. So, uh, what was I saying? I, um, oh, the ending. Yeah. Uh, where it goes, like where it's just this massive uh, food poisoning with all of the models and they're all vomiting except for Kirsten Dunst who didn't have the shellfish. And then at the end when everything was closed down and they go berserk and start tearing shit up and now Kirsten Dunst gets her anchor job by taking over for a woman who was just shot and killed. Mm. That was funny. Yeah. Like, that that stuff still worked. But you're right. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I kind of get why this is here, because I, I guess without this here, it would have maybe ran too short. Mm -hmm. Maybe. But I don't know. The movie The movie's 94 minutes long. It could have gotten by with being an 80-minute movie. But some of that stuff at the end was still pretty funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I liked where the movie ended. I think they could have just, like, sped up the bit between um, Denise Richards exploding and uh, her getting the anchor jab. Mm hmm But it wasn't enough to, like, just to make me not enjoy the movie. I definitely liked it. <laughs> I recommend it. Thank you, Jordan, for making us watch it. Yeah, yeah. I think the... Uh, and now to talk more about Overboard. <laughs> just... God damn it. <laughs> You can talk about Crocodile Dundee. I haven't seen Crocodile Dundee in a long time. Oh, oh that's, it has that's the VHS. not aged well. Yeah, sorry, there's there's two VHSs holding up the TV. And also... Mad Max. Dentine and Fire. Dentine Fire. We could review Dentine Fire. But Crocodile Dundee and Crocodile Dundee 2 are two movies that I watched religiously growing up. And then you rewatch Crocodile Dundee and you realize that the... Um, He's a gigantic chauvinist and fairly transphobic, and just like grabbing people's crotches and he, bars. And they're he's, like, oh, he's, he's, from, he's so fucking provincial. He's he's from a different place. It's a fish out of water. You, know, you get fucking the... assuming some some black dude is Aboriginal. Well, yeah. And then it turns out that he actually does have boomerang <laughs> we, powers. We've all been there. I, I could mean, be getting the first one know. confused with the second one. The, I actually always preferred the second one. The as second one as, is better. That's the yeah. one where he goes back to Australia because of the drug dealer. That he fights drug dealers in that. Sue Charlton. Yeah, the, he kidnaps drug dealers. Like, the, yeah, I always kind of preferred the second one. Um, <laughs> they get the one guide, and the guide finds out. He's like, oh, wait, you're talking about Mick Dundee? Oh, fuck that shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of things about 80s movies that I just let slide. <laughs> like, it's... <laughs> The 80s. <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not saying, like, how dare they back then. What what did they know? Poor, <laughs> poor little lambs. But it's like, if you watch it now, it's, it's it, there's parts that kind of make me cringe. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it in a while. Well, I, plus, I, apparently, I, he's just not a very nice person. Well, I, yeah, I, I've heard that episode of How Did This Get Made. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever watched the third Crocodile Dundee movie? I never saw that. Crocodile Dundee in Los Angeles. Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, him and Sue Charlton are still living in the outback <laughs> yeah. in a house made out of license plates. Mm -hmm. And she's just like wandering around in a thong underpants and a white blouse. <laughs> the, the, uh, the next thing that we got requested was Dave and I got requested to watch a movie called Interstate 60, which I've never, I don't think I've heard of that before. Mm -hmm. I looked it up. Sounds like it'll be all right. You know what I'm saying? Because like all the ones that I've had to go to so far have been good movies, which mm -hmm. I was not expecting. And we've got to watch them just at, at, at home too, at you uh -huh. guys' place. <laughs> um, no, I, if you haven't seen this movie, uh, check it out. I laughed my ass off at this. This was... This had a lot of really good fucked up, quirky, dark humor to it. And as in terms of mockumentary movies go, it was the jokes had landed pretty well in this. Like it was it was absurd and it was 
very quirky, and I I enjoyed it. it oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just gonna say if you remember yourself not liking it back then when it came out, I don't know. Give it another chance because for whatever reason, it didn't really register me with register with me very well in '99, but. Uh, here, much years later, I don't know, yeah, like I said, I left my ass off watching this. Yeah, the, being the first time I've watched it, I, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, mm -hmm. It kind of had a, a sort of sense of nostalgia for that time period without yeah, being it did. dated. Like, it seems like, it felt like it could have been made now, just about the late 90s. Yeah. And it's fun to watch, like, the tiny baby versions of people, because it's got it's Amy Adams, it's got Brittany Murphy, yeah. it's got Denise Richards, mm -hmm. it's got uh, C.J. Craig, who's Allison Janney. Um, it's got Tom Lennon's voice. It's got voice. Tom Lennon. Well, I, usually I call him out first first time I get, but you had to tell me. I thought it was him. Like, when it, when he started, the cu first couple of times that I heard the interviewer talk, I was like, uh -huh. that sounds, I'll bet that's Tom Lennon. Like, I scrolled, it was at the very bottom of IMDb, <laughs> like, uncredited voice only or something like that. Speaking of which, I have to show you some of the videos that um, him and Charlene Yee have been putting up. Yeah. He's, he's in the new Puppet Master movie, which yeah, is like, yeah. two great tastes that taste great together. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he's been posting all sorts of, like, weird videos of them mm -hmm. doing, like, dueling banjos and shit. Nice. That'd be awesome. He's my favorite. Um, and I, I love Kirstie Alley, too. Yeah. So, I, yeah, it's, and, it's uh, always fun seeing Kirstie Alley pop up. Oh, what's her face? Um, her, her little sidekick who's in all sorts of shit. Oh, the, yeah, the lady from, uh... She's like the shrieking lesbian in the Austin Powers movies. Yeah, Lines. and, um... Fuck, yeah, I can't remember, but, yeah, she was Ellen Barkin, who spends half of the movie with like a, beer a beer can... can fused to her hand. Fused to her hand because she blew up in a trailer... It's okay, though, because she managed to cram Kirsten Dunst's tap shoes down her panties yeah. as she was exploding to save them from the blast. Oh, she had Alice and Janney there to take care of her, too. <laughs> that was my other favorite character. With, though, when those characters were on screen, like, the, a lot of the movie was reminding me of a way better version of, like, Jerry Springer Ringmaster. Oh, fuck. I've... Remember Didn't that? Didn't that one have Denise Richards in it, too? Or am I confused? It had um, Jamie Presley in it. That's who it is. Um, Can't be faked in East Richards. <laughs> Jamie Pre and Michael Dudikoff. Um, yeah, that movie was not great. Yeah. Oh, God. Like, this movie, honestly, when I went back, when we watched it, mm -hmm. like I said, I, I remembered not liking it, but honestly, it didn't surprise me that I liked it better upon this viewing. Uh, thinking back to a lot of it, I was like, you know what? I'll bet y'all like this movie a lot better now than than then. Jerry Springer Ringmaster? I would be <laughs> shocked if I watched that and was like, you know what? This movie was misunderstood. <laughs> I'm concerned that a Patreon subscriber may make us watch Jerry Springer's Ringmaster. So, shall I, can I appeal to your sense of humanity and don't make me watch that movie again? I don't know, maybe. I thought they were going to request Overboard and they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get real. We're going to eventually sit down and watch Overboard on our own Steam. Yes. They know us too well. <laughs> again, it was a different time. <laughs> You could just kidnap people from the hospital and make them do shit. <laughs> this lady's mine now! Yay! They are still together. Of course she they and, are. She and Kurt Russell. Why wouldn't that be the basis for a relationship? <laughs> I, you know, I find uh, dated, badly dated things adorable. <laughs> <laughs> they really kind of are. <laughs> But I think, for me, I think they're also, they're fun to grouse about as well. <laughs> it's fun to look at shit and go like, you know, you probably could, couldn't do that exact script nowadays. Like, as much as I love Revenge of the Nerds, it's got some <laughs> fucked up shit in that movie. Yeah. <laughs> Man, some of those characters belong in prison. <laughs> like, which, which is the John Hughes movie where he'd like, like rapes by deception that one guy's girlfriend no, that was that wasn't Hughes that was oh wait you're thinking of uh I know I sorry I thought you were talking about um Lewis and Betty and uh Revenge of the Nerds it could very um, well be like it, it seems in, to happen a lot in the 80s where there's in, like a stuck up female character who's dating like a jock and the guy decides to get one over on her by pretending to be his boy pretending to be her boyfriend having sex with her and she's like I guess we're dating now in Sixteen Candles, 
Anthony Michael Hall hooked up with the cheerleader girl when they were drunk. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember her thinking that... Uh, I could be telling a lie, but if you know what movie I'm talking about, by all means, drop me a line. I also seem to recall there's a movie where, like, he he just, like, gets in the car with the girl and drives off with her, and she's like, what? No! And then that's just the end of that scene. I thought you were going to say it's the end of the movie. I'm <laughs> yeah. like, what the hell? Um, it's the end of that movie and the beginning of a much darker movie. Here's one of the most fucked up things I've seen in a while. Like, um, two things. You ever see, you ever see License to Drive with the two Corys where, uh, uh, Heather Graham is the love interest and she's like passed out in the back seat so Corey Feldman takes out the old camera and is like ooh bra click 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh Corey you were the more rebellious one <laughs> and vice versa which is a movie I still love but it's got a fucked up scene in it um you know, have you seen Vice Versa? The sw body switch movie with Judge Reinhold and Fred Savage was like, I wish I could change places with you, Dad. Me too, son. Switch. Ah! <laughs> so, anyway, there's a part where Judge Reinhold has a girlfriend in it. Mm -hmm. And there's a part where she is in Fred Savage's room. Now, at this point in the movie, Fred Savage is the dad. And so, he is kind of telling her what he probably should have told them as an adult say but he's doing it as as the son as he's the saying kid. like he's saying like my dad's always wanted to tell you that he really loves you and things like that and <coughs> he kind of gets caught up in the moment and sort of moves in like he's gonna kiss her and so does she for like a split how second how old is she <laughs> Or how old is he in this movie? Like, ten. Oh, no. And she kind of moves in, too. And then Judge Reinhold walks in. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've seen this movie hundreds of times, and I forgot how fucked up that is. I was watching it with Allison not too long ago, and both of us were like, Wait, what? <laughs> well, you say thank God when Judge Reinhold walks in, but that's a whole nother layer of wrong because that's Fred Savage walking in on your, his dad in his body about to make out with his girlfriend. Oh, no, no, no. He, they do, like, uh, Judge Reinhold and the girlfriend are, like, making out at one point. And Judge Reinhold's body with Fred Savage's brain yeah. is making out with the girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, and, then, uh, and then Fred Savage comes in and goes, I feel sick. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie, you look like you have a fever. <laughs> Boy, is he in trouble. And that, I'm sure it's been bitched about before, but, like, in Big, that whole thing is completely fucked up. You know what? At least in Big, though... That movie has a much more kind of dramatic psychological level to it uh -huh. than vice versa, which is just kind of... Yeah, like, maybe he's just, like, a child at heart, you know, and she's all like, you know, oh, bunk bed, I'm on top. But then at the end, he's like, oh, turns out I'm 10. And she's like, all right, well, look me up in 12 years. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, like, it, yeah, I mean, any movie like that is going to have maybe a few issues. But, like, <laughs> at least in Big, it gets fairly dramatic as the movie goes along. Like, mm -hmm. he does start actually be becoming an adult in the in the film like at yeah. least at least that is a little bit more smarter written than like than vice versa which is a fun <laughs> movie but it's it's goofy and it's it's it you know it's goofy and it's just supposed to be kind of slapsticky mm -hmm. um any one of these movies go ahead and suggest to us i'll watch vice versa again and overboard and license to drive or it suggests us another good movie that i've never seen because i enjoyed this movie great yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be something random that none of us have heard of probably <laughs> anyway talk to you later bye bye